Welcome back to the official D5 Render Tutorial Series. In this lesson, we'll dive into the D5 Asset Library and learn about the tools used to place assets in your scene. But before that, there's something we need to do first, choose the file location where your assets will be stored. Click on Menu, Preference, and then Asset Storage and choose a disk drive path. Make sure it has enough space because assets can require a lot of storage. All your downloaded assets will be transferred to this location as well. By setting this location, you can avoid the problem of having downloaded assets all over your computer and not knowing where to find them. Click Assets in the upper left corner to open the Asset Library and there you'll see Models, Materials, and Particles. D5 provides a wide range of high-quality models in the most common categories of architecture, landscape, and interior design. D5 also offers many dynamic models including characters, animals, and vegetation. You might notice that certain plants have a special icon on their thumbnail that indicates it's a dynamic model. For instance, if you add one of these plants to your scene, turn on the wind and environment, and then adjust the strength parameter, you can see that it's swaying in the wind and bringing life to your whole scene. There are also thousands of high-quality PBR materials in the D5 Asset Library that can be directly applied to your models. It saves you a lot of time from searching online for the ideal material or even trying to make the PBR material yourself. Also included are particles like snow, fire, fluid, smoke, fallen leaves, etc. To avoid overloading your graphics card, it's best to place particles only where they are visible by the camera. You can store your own model or material library in the local asset library. Select the model you would like to store and click Add to Local. It's better to add models to local after their UVs and materials have been adjusted, so you won't have to adjust them again later. You can see that a thumbnail for your model was created when it was added to your local library. You can update or customize the thumbnail by right-clicking the model. Renaming of models is also supported. The local library can be categorized to better manage your resources. Right-click to create a new category, rename or delete categories. For example, I renamed this category, Desk. Now, click on Uncategorized, find the model I just added, and right-click it to move it to the category, Desk. Moving and deleting multiple models are supported too. When we need to use the model from the local asset library, just click and place it into the scene. Let's move on to the local material library. If you want to add materials to your local library, press I to activate the material picker, then select the material and click on the upper right corner to add it. Just like adding a model, you should adjust all the materials parameters before adding it. The options for right-clicking on materials and moving them into categories are basically the same as for models. To use a material from your local library, click on the material you want to apply and the mouse cursor will turn into a picker. Then click on a model and the material will be applied. It's just so easy. An organized local asset library with abundant assets you frequently use is a must. This can greatly improve your efficiency. Next is the vegetation tool. It lets you place one or multiple models at random as quickly as possible. D5 Render now provides three tools, Brush, Scatter, and Path. First, let's check out Brush. Above the main viewport, you can see four icons. The third one is Draw Vegetation. Click on it and select Brush. Choose the model or models you want to place and then adjust the radius, density, size, and random size. If the surface of the model is uneven, you should turn on a line to terrain. You can change to eraser to erase the models drawn by brush. Please note you have to select the plants drawn by brush to erase them, otherwise, it doesn't work. In version 2.2, brush records have been added. After painting or scattering objects in your model, you can click on any unlocked model to see the brush records on the right sidebar. Information about painted objects or plants is contained within these records, and each can be hidden, renamed, or deleted separately. If you want to reuse or delete certain plants you used earlier, records can really come in handy. Each record stores different information, so if you've used the same combination of plants more than once throughout the process, these steps will be merged into one record. The second tool is Scatter. 
Same as with brush, choose the object you need after clicking on the scatter tool, then select a face of a model. The object will be randomly scattered across the surface of this model. You can also adjust parameters like radius and size. To remove the plants scattered over a face, just pull the eraser radius to the highest and erase them all. If certain plants are not removed after erasing, remember to check to see if you've selected them. And of course, records for scattering are also supported. The last one is the path tool. This works not only with vegetation, but also with characters and vehicles. Here I'm using a character as an example. Since it's a long path, I'll select as many characters as possible, so they are less likely to be duplicated. Also, pay attention to the clothes these characters are wearing. It would be strange to have them dressed for a different season or weather condition. To have people on the path walking, remember to select the dynamic ones from the character models. Once drawing the path is finished, press escape or right click to exit the drawing. By selecting the path, you can delete or rotate it. Adjusting the density, width, direction are also supported. For uneven surfaces, you can select on the ground. With this button here, you can click on it to edit the path. Paths for vehicles work the same way. Try it for yourself. Alright, that's all for today's lesson. With thousands of models that come with the D5 asset library and the vegetation tools, you can easily set up a scene without worrying about searching for assets or placing them one by one. That concludes the official D5 render tutorial series. I hope you've learned many things from these lessons and seen just how easy it is to take full advantage of D5's features. Thank you for watching and supporting D5. See you next time!